Eddie Brock, the host of the Venom Symbiote, is on trial for his freedom with Matt Murdock, aka Daredevil, as his attorney in the Trial of Venom. What's up guys, Roman from RNS Entertainment here, and welcome to another episode of Comic History, the weekly series where I explain and retell the iconic storylines, origins, and events in the world of comics. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at The Trial of Venom, an awesome self-contained Venom story set between the events in my Origin of Carnage video and Venom's last confrontation as a Spider-Man villain before cementing himself as an anti-hero in Lethal Protector, Venom Attacks, which I will be covering in a future video. If you want to see the events leading up to this and get Venom's full story up to this point, check out my other comic history episodes, Origin of Venom, Venom vs. Spider-Man Round 2, Venom Returns, and Origin of Carnage, in that order. These can all be found easily in the comic history playlist or the Spider-Man Symbiotes history playlist on my channel. In Trial of Venom, we see Daredevil get brought to the center of Spider-Man's conflict with his symbiote antithesis Venom, and not on the side you might think. Trial of Venom begins with a scream heard from inside Venom's cell in the supervillain prison, The Vault. And when the staff and guards run to investigate, they find Eddie Brock terrified and recoiling from the Venom symbiote, which is crumpled up in a pile on the ground, seemingly dead, with foam coming out of its mouth, and Eddie saying that it had killed itself, and to get it away from him. Elsewhere, we see Spider-Man and Daredevil swinging through the city, with Daredevil telling Spidey that he was going to defend Eddie Brock in an upcoming hearing, and that even though he was requested to do it by the court, as Matt Murdock, for his experience in previous supervillain trials, he wanted to do it, as Eddie deserved fair representation in court like anyone else. Spider-Man is furious at Daredevil for defending his archenemy, and even madder when Daredevil asks him to be an expert witness, but agrees to do it when Daredevil mentions that as the only person who knows anything about the Venom symbiote, it was his responsibility. Daredevil goes to meet with Eddie as Matt Murdock and requests that Eddie's cell not be monitored during his visit to ensure confidentiality. Eddie tells him that the symbiote had grown depressed and frustrated by enclosure, on top of still being lovesick for Spider-Man, and through some internal means had just willed itself to stop living. The whole time, Matt uses his super hearing to monitor Eddie's heartbeat and other vital signs, acting as a living lie detector and seeing no fluctuations or signs of anything but Eddie telling the truth. Matt tells him that he's going to make a plea of not guilty due to insanity, and that the insanity was no longer present without the symbiote connected to him. Spider-Man confronts Matt when he exits, but Matt refuses to give Spider-Man any information about his client, which continues to annoy him. The trial begins, and Spider-Man is asked about his history with Venom, who Spider-Man refers to as Brock, leading Murdoch to question him on how Venom had referred to himself in their first encounter. Venom had said he used to be Eddie Brock, which Murdoch asserts through questioning could mean that Eddie Brock as a human had been controlled and sublimated by the desires of the symbiote. Spider-Man continues to say that the hatred Venom had for him came from Eddie Brock, and that if he didn't join with the symbiote, he still would have been a threat. Murdoch points out that J. Jonah Jameson hates Spider-Man, but isn't considered a murderous threat towards him, and that before Eddie had joined with the symbiote, he never made one move to hurt him or even to contact him. He points out that Eddie, before joining with Venom, had been planning on killing himself, meaning there was no way he planned to kill Spider-Man before the symbiote had joined with him. Suddenly, Eddie yells that he wants to ask Spider-Man a question, and though the judge yells for order, Eddie asks if Spider-Man could ever forgive him for the things he had done. Both sides make their final statements, with the prosecution saying that Eddie Brock was a criminal with or without the costume, and Murdoch as the defense stating that there was no evidence leading to that conclusion, and that Venom was the criminal, with Eddie not being responsible for the actions of the symbiote. While the judge deliberates, Spider-Man goes to speak with Eddie, who tells him that if he does get out, he wasn't going to return to New York, but start over somewhere new. And when Matt comes for Eddie, Spider-Man goes to the head of the vault to set up a backup just in case. The judge declares Eddie Brock not guilty by reason of insanity, and as Matt leads him out of the courtroom, Eddie grins and says that he wasn't going to be any more trouble for anyone. Spider-Man comes up behind Eddie and webs his legs to the ground, grabbing him by the shirt and yelling at him, saying that Brock was nothing, just a jealous, pathetic loser, that he would never amount to anything. Brock yells at him to shut up and suddenly blasts the Venom symbiote from his mouth, ripping off his shirt and screaming as Spider-Man's fears are confirmed. Eddie had fooled the lie detectors and Murdoch's senses by keeping the Venom symbiote inside of his body, using it to keep his heartbeat steady and his vitals normal, with the dead symbiote in the cell just a shape-shifted mass of extra symbiote, just like his webbing. 
Venom turns the symbiote into Judge's robes and says that they'll have their own trial, one where he is Judge and Jury, creating a noose that he puts Spider-Man's neck in as he begins to hang him. Matt shows up as Daredevil and wraps his Billy Club rope around Venom's neck, saying that he objects. And as Spider-Man fights his way free of the noose, Daredevil is knocked to the ground by Venom, injuring his shoulder. Spider-Man tackles Venom off of a ledge, with the two sliding to the bottom and Venom chasing Spider-Man into a cave opening, saying that running away is just Spidey style. Spider-Man shines his spider signal in Venom's face, and Venom says that their final battle is the only one that will matter, and that when it comes down to it, one of them has to kill the other to win. Venom leaps at Spider-Man, who jumps over him, turning to face Venom and telling the head of the vault to turn their machine off. Venom charges him and hits a force field, with Spider-Man revealing that he had led Venom into one of the vault's cells, using their holographic technology to make it look like the interior of a cave. Later that night, Daredevil meets Spider-Man on a rooftop, saying that Venom had fired him as his attorney for not being willing to pursue a legal case against Spider-Man for hitting him as he left the courtroom, which messed up his otherwise effective plan. Daredevil tells Spider-Man that though Eddie was still connected with Venom, everything Matt had said in his defense was still true. That Eddie, at the core of it, might really not be responsible for his actions, and that if that's true, Venom is a tragic character, suffering for crimes over which he has no control. And that wraps up the Trial of Venom. It's a fun, self-contained Venom Spider-Man story with Daredevil thrown in as both his superhero identity and Matt Murdock, which I think worked out really well. This issue explores Eddie Brock's characterization in a way that would later be expanded on in the story of his first kill, with Matt pointing out that before the Venom symbiote joined with him, Eddie had no murderous impulses. It also shows more of the adaptability of Venom in using the symbiote. Having it control his heart rate and bodily impulses is something we see to this day, being featured recently in Mike Costa's Venom series. Trial of Venom leads directly into Venom and Spider-Man's final confrontation with Venom as a straight-up villain, Venom Attacks bringing Mark Bagley in to provide what, in my opinion, is the best Venom artwork of all time. And David Michelini picking up the writing, which goes on into Lethal Protector, and really defines the character as an anti-hero. Be on the lookout for that video in the near future, along with all sorts of great symbiote, Spider-Man, and other episodes of Comic History. You can also check out the Comic History playlist for all of the Comic History episodes we've done so far, or the Spider-Man Symbiotes History playlist for just the episodes on Spider-Man, Venom, Carnage, and other characters specific to those mythos. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, let me know what you'd like to see in future videos, and subscribe to my channel. If there's any storyline, origin, or event you really want to see an episode on, you can even commission one by donating to our Patreon, which goes a long way to helping support the channel and ensuring I can continue to do this full-time. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter, like and follow our Facebook page, and I'll see you all next time.